Hey there, and welcome to this week's edition of Clean Technica's news broadcast. My name is Hanan, I'm your host, and this week we have a bit less news than normal. It's a bit of a, bit of a slow news week, and uh, most of the stories pertain to either electric vehicles or to Tesla. So, let's get to it. Tesla Semi. So many mysteries still remain about this vehicle. Uh, first and foremost, I would probably say the battery is a pretty big mystery. What exactly goes in there? Uh, second place, I would probably uh, put a question of when they're actually going to start making them and delivering them to customers. And actually, I don't need to continue that list because this week we have an answer to that second question. And what better source than an email from Elon Musk to all employees? This leaked email we are able to confirm via different channels and was also confirmed on Twitter by Elon Musk himself. So we can be pretty sure that it's legit. While on first glance it may not seem like this is telling us a lot, in reality through the process of deduction there's actually a lot of information we can extract from this one short email. The first being the fact that the battery production will take place at the Gigafactory. Some people might say well duh, but in reality right now the batteries the Gigafactory are only made by Panasonic and these next gen batteries. Panasonic is not going to be making them. There is pretty much no chance of that happening. So Tesla's secret Roadrunner project that they currently have a sort of a manual pilot line at the Fremont factory, probably on the semi-secret second floor, will be moved to Gigafactory at some point. Hopefully some point soon, probably after battery day. Uh, or it could actually be also in Fremont uh, currently in a separate facility because for example Tesla's seat factory that we visited was also in a separate building from the main factory a five minute drive away from the main complex. Right now employees at the Gigafactory know very little about what is going to happen but that should change soon enough. Then there's also the fact that most other work will take place in other states. Either Tesla wants to shy away from these larger style factories or what seems more likely to me that the semi-production will take place at the exact same factory where Tesla is going to produce the Cybertruck, which is either in Texas or Oklahoma, wherever they plan to make that factory basically. So there are some rumors out there that Tesla will be able to build Giga Berlin faster than they did Giga Shanghai because they learned a thing or two during that process. To me, this seems extremely unlikely, but until they actually start building the factory and not just preparing the soil there, we won't really know for sure. In the Q4 update, Tesla said that semi-production has been delayed till 2021. Unless they start to build that still currently unannounced factory on some pretty easy to prep soil sometime soon, 2021 is starting to look less and less likely. Market cap. Because of the Tesla Semi news that we just talked about, Tesla's stock jumped significantly and for the very first time it has surpassed 1000 US dollars, which is just crazy. This also means that the market cap of 190 billion now surpassed Toyota with their 182 billion dollar market cap. This makes Tesla the largest automaker in the entire world by market cap. There is nobody left to surpass on this metric. And so this makes a lot of people wonder, and it's an important thing to understand, is Tesla overvalued? Let me answer that question using another question. Are Tesla's current uh, assets, their production, their sales, their revenue worth this valuation? Absolutely not. However, Tesla is a lot more than the sum of its parts. Tesla is the promise of Tesla. It's their mission. Considering all the technologies that are, are just over the horizon and Tesla's potential to dominate the automotive industry, the robotaxi industry, transportation industry, energy generation industry, practically create a massive energy storage market from scratch and move on from there to markets like aviation, uh, home HVACs, and God knows what else. In other words, Tesla has the potential to become the biggest, most successful corporation out there, and it would still be undervalued if it had Apple's market cap of 1.53 trillion and not the 190 billion that they just reached. Now, Galileo Russell of Hyperchange TV has said multiple times that he's going to hold Tesla to 1 trillion. And that is not a joke. I mean, if you look at Elon Musk's current compensation plan, you will see it says that to get to the highest payment tier, Tesla needs to reach a market cap of 650 billion. 
Elon has just unlocked the second trance of his compensation plan. And just a few months after that, the stock jumped so much that on the metric for market cap, he has almost already reached the third tranche. That is incredible progress. And it's all about whether you believe Tesla that they will be able to do what they say they will do and that they can actually expand into all these markets and dominate. Belief in Tesla is its valuation. And eventually, when it actually does all those things, of course, it will have that valuation maybe even higher because nobody knows where the limits are here for this company. China sales. A lot of people were worried when Tesla in China in April only sold 4,000 Model 3s, where they sold more than 10,000 the month before that. However, there's good news because this month in May, Tesla actually sold just a bit over 11,000 Model 3s. And when you add that all up together, in total, Tesla has sold 32,000 Model 3s this year. In other words, it's a record month for Tesla in China. Model Y in Canada. This week, Tesla also started sales of the Model Y in Canada, starting with Vancouver. There are a bunch of images online from the Tesla Owners Club in the province of British Columbia in Canada. Uh, the images show them posing next to a Model Y. Presumably, one of them is there to pick it up from Tesla. The Peugeot e-Traveler. Peugeot just announced a new electric vehicle, the e-Traveler van. It looks exactly the same as the existing Traveler van, but it's electric. There are two battery capacities, 50 kilowatt hour and 75 kilowatt hour. Now the range for the second battery, the 75 kilowatt hour battery, is 330 kilometers WLTP. Peugeot further claims that the vehicle has two levels of autonomy, uh, whatever that means, probably a standard cruise control and an adaptive cruise control that maybe keeps lane, maybe keeps distance between you and the car in front of it. In any case, the vehicle is available in different configurations and can seat up to nine people. Peugeot is pitching this as a high-end VIP transport shuttle. The press release shows a lot of images of it next to airports. This is interesting considering that GM is also eyeing the electric van market, but then for professionals, for them to put stuff in rather to transport important individuals in luxury. Volkswagen ID3 deliveries. So a few weeks ago, we reported that Volkswagen is going to open up the orders for the 30,000 people who have pre-ordered a first edition Volkswagen ID3 on June 17th. Now this week we have learned that the company plans to start shipping these cars in September and customers are given two choices, either to receive their car immediately in September or at some point in Q4. And there's an important distinction between these two choices uh, because if you get your car in September, some features will still be missing. However, if you choose to receive your car in Q4, it'll come with all features the moment that they give you the key. And those that got their cars in September will get all those features as an update at some point in Q4. Now, uh, when Volkswagen will open up the orders for the other non-first edition ID3s is also known, and that is on July 15th. But when these cars will start shipping to consumers, that is still unknown. Volkswagen management. Next, we actually stay with Volkswagen because there is some drama amongst their top brass. Their current CEO, Herbert Dies, is going to step down, and the chief operations officer, Ralf Brandstetter, is, has been promoted to the position of CEO. Herbert Dies still remains chairman of the board, both of uh, Volkswagen Group as well as Volkswagen Automotive. But why did this happen exactly? Well, the fact that the ID3 launch was seriously botched may have something to do with it. But officially the company is citing that this action is part of the effort to help implement some pretty big cost-cutting uh, efforts that the company is currently in negotiations with uh, labor leaders that represent almost a majority of the supervisory board. Now, Herbert Dies claims to be very much on board with this decision, but whether that is just a safe face or whether he really had too much work on his plate remains questionable at best. CATL Million Mile Battery This week, CATL has announced that they have created a power pack that will last for more than a million miles for a mere cost increase of 10%. Now, obviously, these are LFP batteries or LFMP batteries, but whether uh, the company already has any contracts with someone uh, to make them remains unclear. But the company did say that uh, they are ready to produce them in mass the moment that anyone actually signs a contract for them. Now, obviously, these are, like I said, these are LFP batteries and they don't have as much capacity, not nearly as much capacity, as NCA and NMC uh, batteries that are currently used in long range electric vehicles. Now, also, LFP batteries already had pretty much twice 
the number of cycles uh, that NMC and NCA had. So this increase isn't enormous, but could potentially still be pretty useful for uh, multiple scenarios. And in my case, the most important ones would be stationary storage or a second life, which would most likely also come in the form of stationary storage, just a lot less compact. Whether these are the batteries that Tesla will use in the Giga Shanghai Mate Standard Range Plus remains unknown, but it's not impossible. BMW iX3. The BMW iX3 that is slated for production near the end of 2020 has just entered pre-production. However, since this is already pre-production and the company's official wording was by the end of 2020, it could come sooner. In fact, in that same press release, the company stated that standard production will start in late summer. Now, what's interesting is that the iX3 and the regular X3 will be made on the same manufacturing line. And if you remember from last week, uh, I was telling you about our direct contact with BMW in the US and that they were telling us that they have this um, one fits all platform uh, so that they can make electric vehicles, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles and hydrogen vehicles on the same line. Well, here you see that in action. The vehicle has a WLTP range of 440 kilometers. However, considering the fact that it has a 75 kilowatt hour battery, that's not bad, but it could end up uh, being a lot less like was the case with the Audi e-tron and the Jaguar I-Pace that both have batteries that are larger than 75 kilowatt hours. However, unlike those companies, BMW does already have some experience with electric vehicles, uh, namely from their BMW i3. So I have hopes that the vehicle uh, will perform as advertised, that it will perform adequately. Now, in this pre-production, BMW has already made 200 BMW iX3s. Not bad. Las Vegas Tunnel. So, boring company news two weeks in a row. Last week we mentioned that there is a new tunnel project to reach uh, Ontario International Airport. And this week there is some news regarding the loop in Las Vegas that, uh, to reach the Las Vegas Convention Center. Now, two casino hotels, Wynn Las Vegas and the still under construction Resorts World Las Vegas, want the tunnel to also have stations at their hotels so that their guests can have easier access to the convention center. Trust in the boring company is uh, certainly increasing quite rapidly. Volkswagen Ford Alliance. An agreement between Ford and Volkswagen has just been signed and part of the announcement is the volume of vehicles uh, to which this contract pertains to and that is a whopping 8 million, 600,000 of which will be electric vehicles that will be built atop Volkswagen's electric MEB platform. The companies also plan to share technologies for some vans and some pickups, but they were not explicitly listed as electric, so they're probably not. Two other interesting quotes from that press release. Volkswagen and Ford plan to explore additional ways to cooperate on electric vehicles. This quote is uh, quite self-explanatory. Then the other quote is, additionally, the companies will both work with Argo AI to form distinct, highly capable autonomous vehicle businesses based on Argo AI's self-driving technology. Again, economies of scale at work here, they really make a huge difference in this industry. Ford F-150 delay. Continuing with Ford, in an interview with CNBC, Ford's uh, chief operation officer has said that the electric uh, Ford F-150 pickup will arrive in the middle of 2022, whereas previously it was supposed to arrive before 2022. There are a bunch of uh, electric pickup trucks that are going to be uh, released near the end of 2021, so it does seem that Ford will be a little bit late to that party. However, uh, quite soon on July 25th, they will be unveiling a redesign for the regular Ford F-150 and the electric Ford F-150 is supposed to look pretty similar to that. So I guess we'll soon find out what it's actually going to look like. And it's also possible that they might uh, present a prototype for the electric Ford F-150 while there, because if you're going to be late, you want to make sure that customers know uh, what you have in store for them. Or if you want to take that a bit more literally, what you will have in store for them in the middle of 2022. And that was it for this week's broadcast. We hope that you guys liked it. And if you did, please consider sharing it with your friends that also care about clean tech. We'd really appreciate that. Also giving this video a thumbs up will help us along. Now, everything that we cover in the news broadcast, we also try to write articles about and the links to those can be found in the first pinned comment down below. Other than that, I wish you guys a great weekend. Till next time, see ya.